Hello, my fellow dear listeners. Hey, I'm Kim Artlip. You're tuned in to another delicious episode of This Old Baker Podcast, a.k.a. The Sweet Spot. Today, we're going to turn the page into a chapter that's close to my heart, Baking Healthier Options. Now, whether you're on a wellness journey, have dietary restrictions, or you just want to make better choices, This episode may sprinkle some nutritious tips into your baking routine. Now, I have mentioned in my other uh, episode and on social media that I've had health issues, and a lot of that affected my liver and kidneys. Uh, I have some psoriatic arthritis and some other issues that are going on health-wise. And after having my gallbladder out, There are a lot of foods that I simply can't digest anymore. So I had to get rid of a lot of processed meats and processed foods in my diet. So doing that was me rethinking ingredients. So let's start with the base of all baking adventures, and that's the ingredients. Substituting refined sugars with natural sweeteners like honey, maple syrup, or even date paste can make a world of difference. These alternatives not only impart a unique flavor, but also bring additional nutrients to the table. Now, flour is another cornerstone ingredient that's open to transformation. Almond flour, coconut flour, and oat flours are not just gluten-free friends, They're packed with fiber and healthy heart fats. Now they do behave differently than traditional wheat flour, so it's kind of an experiment and experience to use them. I had some wonderful recipes given to me when I started switching over into almond flour uh, by my uh, mother-in-law. And um, she is a very health conscious eater She taught me a few recipes on different um, quick breads, and I'm going to tell you what, they were fantastic. And it was something I could digest, and it didn't bother me at all. And I loved uh, having that option. Now, you do see me use a lot of all-purpose flour, but there are recipes that I do do that are almond flour and coconut flour. Um, And I really should do more of those, actually. But I... I like, I like all-purpose flour when I can use it, but, you know, sometimes you just have to, you have to embrace change, and changing out your flour is an easy fix, but it's, some of us are a little hesitant to do it because we're so ingrained in it, you know, 50 years of baking one way is kind of hard to change, but you can do it. I have faith in you, but you can also change your your techniques and swap in some savories you can do a beautiful crusty bowl for bread with whole grains that increases your fiber intake it gives your bread a depth of flavor that's just absolutely irresistible and using toasted seeds and nuts incorporated into dough elevates your loaves from just a simple loaf of bread to spectacular i love walnuts i love pecans I love almonds, and I use a lot of nuts in in my baking. I also make my own um, everything bagel seasoning. I like controlling what's going into my food, and I like doing pre-made mixes and pantry mixes and knowing that when I want to have certain things like onion soup mix or anything or taco seasoning or a rub on a steak, I control what's in that. I control the salt. I control the seasoning. And I like that sense of control. I'm not a control freak, but I like being able to control and not just get a lot of emptiness because I have a lot of friends and family that have blood pressure issues and are supposed to be on a low sodium diet. And the problem we had was no matter what you fix, there they were, salting away. Because in their head, there was no flavor. But when you put in different savories and more flavor and add sesame and add something, you give them that crunch, that flavor, that bite. That's what makes them think that they're getting the salt that they're not getting. 
It's a trick. It's sneaky, but it works. Now let's talk about fat. There's nothing wrong with swapping out fats. Applesauce and mashed avocados can be used in place of butters and oils in many recipes. And not only will this reduce your saturated fats, but it's gonna add moisture and nutrients. And the funny story is, I learned about using applesauce in place of eggs, because that's how we get a lot of our fat in our cookies. And the weird, <laughs> funny story about me learning about applesauce was actually from an episode of The Walking Dead. Carol is in um, uh, whatever that town is. Um, and I'm such, a, I'm such a Walking Dead fan, and I, I just went to say the name of the town, Alexandria, and I blanked there for a second. But when they first go to Alexandria in the very beginning, and the little boy's wanting the cookies, uh, she uh, makes cookies and uses a, 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 a mashed apple instead of an egg because they don't have eggs. But I learned this many years ago, and I always wondered when I was a little girl how uh, one of the girls I went to school with that was allergic to eggs was able to have her mom make cupcakes without eggs. And now I know, she used applesauce. But there are ways and alternatives, and I will post a lot of these if you watch our social media, the swaps for butter and the swaps for oils and the swaps for different things. I will do graphics with the posts, uh, posts that, that talk about all of this. So let's talk about mindful munching. Just because you're going to eat healthier doesn't, is, it's not actually about what goes into your body. It's about how we approach our consumption. So if you pair your baked goods with fresh fruits, or a little bit of yogurt, you kind of balance out the indulgence with some wholesome choices. So doing a baked good with fresh strawberries or fresh blueberries or a little bit of Greek yogurt not only adds that flavor and changes the texture, but it also gives us, it, we're still being wholesome and making healthy choices in it. And along with that goes our portion control because, you know, size matters. I don't care what anybody says, size matters. A mini version of your favorite treat is great. So if you're gonna make a mini version so you don't overeat, you need to make a mini version that's not high in calories. And that's how you can control a lot of this. You know, like um, just a small satisfying nibble packed with flavor is better than eating a giant muffin that's, you know, the size of a bread loaf that's gonna fill you up and give you no nutritional value. So put the nuts in it, put the berries in, put everything, but give it a small compacted thing and you get that big burst of flavor that satisfies. And you gotta think about experimenting with flavors. You know, we, got, we gotta learn, and this was hard for me, to go beyond vanilla and chocolate, because that's all I grew up with. You either had vanilla or chocolate, vanilla or chocolate. There was no other flavors, but infuse your baking with spices like cinnamon, nutmeg. And I'm gonna tell you, the one that I love, that I don't see used enough, is cardamom. That's not only a flavor punch, but the health benefits are phenomenal. So, you know, get out there and think about stuff. Look at your vegan and gluten-free options. Look at using um, almond milk, oat flour, flax seeds in your baking. And, you know, do different things. And think about, you know, um, moving and, and getting active while you're baking. When your dough's rising, let's say you're baking, while your dough is rising, get up from your chair. Get a good, get a good quick stretch. Get your body as limber as your sourdough starter, you know? A little movement goes a long way to keep us healthy. You know, do a little chair yoga. Now I'm gonna share a little recipe here because uh, we wanna do something healthy. So let's talk about lemon poppy seed muffins. I got a recipe for you. Um, I'm gonna put it here and I will link it on our website. I will be adding it, but let's just talk about, this is two cups of whole wheat flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a half cup of honey, a half cup of unsweetened applesauce, three quarters of a cup of almond milk, juice and zest two lemons, and two tablespoons of poppy seeds. We're gonna mix that all together. Once we get it all mixed together, 
We're going to put that in our muffin cups, bake them for 20 minutes, and you're going to have a guilt-free indulgence. And like I said, I'm going to put this on the thing, on the website. I will add this. But uh, before I wrap up, real quick, I did have somebody uh, that sent in a, a couple different questions that I wanted to answer. And they said, uh, and it was goes with perfectly with this podcast episode. Can I use coconut flour instead of wheat flour? Absolutely. But you got to remember, coconut flour is highly absorbent, so you may need to adjust the amount of your liquid content in your recipe. Um, I'm, I, I had to learn that the hard way. Coconut flour will absorb more of your liquid than all-purpose flour will. So you're going to have to, a little increase. My second question I wanted to answer was, how do you make sure that your baked goods stay moist when you're using a healthy substitute? And this is a great question. Because when you're using, if you use ingredients like applesauce and yogurt and pumpkin puree, they are naturally moist ingredients. They're going to help your your um, baked goods stay tender. They're not going to dry them out. So look at using a, a naturally moist ingredient. Like I said, applesauce, uh, yogurt, pumpkin puree. Keep things soft and tender and moist. So there you have it. Now, you've got these tips, you got some tricks. I'm gonna throw a recipe onto the website. You're ready to start getting into a baking adventure that's kinder to your body. And it's still gonna delight the crap out of your taste buds. So remember, baking healthy doesn't mean saying good riddance to everything delicious. It's about making small changes for substantial benefits. You're gonna explore, substitute, more importantly, enjoy the process. Now, I hope this episode has inspired you to put on your apron and get mixing with a more mindful approach. So please share your baking stories, tag us using hashtag this old baker podcast. And until next time, keep needing love into every slice of life. Happy baking. <laughs>